Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for giving us some of your time today. Uh, I'm seeing some people join in. That's good to see. We're going to let people filter in and give them a few more minutes. Um, but just to start us off here and to say hi, I'm Colin Campbell. I'm the general manager uh, at Sales Hacker. So I lead the team here and I'll be your host today. Today, we're going to talk about this is actually, I'm going to back up because this is actually kind of funny and close to my heart. One of the biggest ways that people actually join the sales hacker community is they find an Excel sheet for tracking compensation and commissions available for download on our website. They click, oh yeah, I want to download that. And they check a little box that says, yeah, I'd like to join the community too. So um, some of you may have downloaded that commission and compensation tracking spreadsheet that we offer. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about why that's maybe not always actually the best thing you should be doing. And in some cases, it's great, but there are some risks inherent in tracking things in the spreadsheet. Thankfully, we've got experts here to help us talk about how to avoid those risks in some pretty smart and common sense ways. So after this, I might actually have to go back and adjust our spreadsheet template based on some of the tips we get today. Um, so as you're joining folks, we've already got 38 of you in the room, and I know you can't see that. So in the chat box down below, open up chat and see where it says blue to panelists. Change that to panelists and attendees so that you can chat with each other. Uh, everybody can see it. And go ahead and introduce yourselves. Let us know who's here, maybe your title, maybe your favorite kind of sandwich, whatever you want to share about yourself. We'll say hi. If you have questions throughout, we will take some questions. We've got some cool polls in here interspersed in between the tips and the tricks. Uh, but if you have questions, don't use the chat. Use the Q&A feature at the bottom. And I'm still waiting to say hi to some of you folks. So let me know who's here in the chat. Meredith is an AE. Her favorite sandwich is a Caprese Panini. It's up there for me, too. Grace Ayers. James Wheeler from Toledo, cool. We've got a BDR from Demand Drive. VP of Sales at Newcom Media, B2B publishing company, cool. Clea is a people ops manager. BC and a grilled cheese. I've got stories about grilled cheeses. Um, all right, that's enough about me and sandwiches. Today, joining us to talk about some of the problems with tracking sales commissions and comp in spreadsheets and the ways to fix those problems are uh, Stan James. He's the VP of Sales at Spiff. Hey, Stan, thanks for being here. Looking forward to the conversation. Thank you. It's going to be great. I really appreciate your time. And joining us as well is Tanner Lacey. He's the growth strategy leader at Spiff. Thanks, Tom. This is a super excited talk. Yeah, us too. So, folks, just really quick again, keep that chat active. Feel free to use it however you want. If you have questions for Tanner, Stan, or myself, although I don't know why you'd ask me anything when you got these two experts. Use the Q&A box and I'll help make sure that your question gets answered. Um, and with that, I'll let Tanner take it away because we want to get right into the meat and potatoes. Awesome. Thanks, Campbell. Uh, wow. Colin. Sorry, guys. I, I um, that's, right. a rough, that's a rough start. I uh, was in Mexico <laughs> all last week and I'm still having a little bit of a uh, after an after vacation hangover. Um, so it's uh, it's it's awesome to be here. Just bear with me, uh, and it's super excited to be talking today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We did prepare a deck. Oh, it looks like I actually need permission from you there, Carl. Oh man, great start indeed. Sorry. Yeah, first first I call you by your last name, like we're playing a sport or something in high school. And I bet. There we go. I reply to anything. Back in school, <laughs> uh, they used to call me Soupy because of my last name. So, you know. I'll reply to anything. Easy. You should have permission okay. to share now, Tanner. Okay, great. Can you see my deck right here? Yep, looks good. Yep, yep. perfect. I'm going to go ahead and click the present because I always accidentally click the share there. Um, awesome. So, guys, today we're, we're going to talk about, um, again, as, as you know, because you signed up, um, four problems with using spreadsheets for commissions and, uh, more importantly, how to solve them. And I want to be super clear, this is not a sales pitch for any solution. Um, we want to talk about the problems that you're dealing with today um, and different ways how to solve them. Yes, there's going to be some ways that uh, different softwares do solve these. But we're going to focus on how you can work through your Excel sheets or your spreadsheets 
um, and make this as efficient as possible for you and your team. So um, guys, just, I mean, quick agenda here. I will, won't go over here too much as by way of like just quick introduction. So um, quick introduction for myself, and then I'll quick get to Stan and then Colin to bring us home. Uh, Tanner, Lacey, uh, lucky enough to be one of the co-founders over at Spiff. We've, we've been around for about four years now. Um, my background is mostly Spiff. I, I helped start Spiff by senior year in college. Um, currently living in Salt Lake City, Utah. I, I was a California refugee with COVID coming from the San Francisco area. Um, ended up deciding to stay because the rent and the, well, the mortgage here is a lot better than the rent in my, in my little apartment in, in South Bay. Um, I've got two little kids, um, that, that keep me on my toes, two little boys, um, and just excited to have a, a probably an unhealthy fascination with comp comp strategy and, and just sales. So super excited to be talking about this today, but Stan, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. Uh, thanks, Tanner. Yeah, uh, Stan James, also in Utah, uh, and have uh, a lot of what um, my feedback and, and anecdotes today would be a lot of the experience I've had working at uh, a lot of SaaS and software companies over the last 20 plus years. So excited to, to engage on, on this discussion because it's near and dear to my heart. And uh, it is certainly something that I think uh, is super important for all of us as uh, sales leaders and individual contributors and just professionals overall. From a personal standpoint, just four kids, uh, all of them are growing up too fast and uh, seem to be pretty busy going wherever they go. So uh, turn it over to Colin, but really look forward to the conversation. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm really just playing host today. Um, I do have some personal uh, history on this topic, though, is because I, those of you who know me, you've been in Sales Hacker webinars before, if you're regulars, I talk about this a lot, that I used to manage an account management team at a marketing agency in Boston. And everything was homegrown, and we had pretty much no tech stack. It was basically Google Suite. So I'm all too familiar with uh, tracking comp and commissions and uh, everything in spreadsheets and the headaches there. I might share a few uh, nightmare stories later on um, if anybody cares to hear them. But otherwise, I'm along for the ride and here to learn from Stan and Tanner along with all of you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much, Colin. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in here. So it's today, again, we're talking four major challenges with spreadsheets for commissions. Uh, I do kind of want to take a step back, though, because even though we're going to be focusing on this with spreadsheets, this these are the four main, like in my opinion, at least, and Colin, Stan, I don't know if you guys agree, but the things that we're going to be talking about today are, are generally just the four challenges with running commissions, right? Whether you're using a tool, whether you're using a spreadsheet, whether you built a homegrown system, um, we're going to be focusing on just four challenges and and how to approach them and we're going to hear some good fun stories um from stan and all of his wisdom and um i have a few to sprinkle in there as well you know excited to, to kind of go through that those different like uh really issues with commissions and again we're talking we'll talk more specifically about spreadsheets in a second is <laughs> like commissions are prone to human error um i'm sure that most, if not all of you on this uh, call can, can share some fun or not so fun experiences with that. Um, two is like just showing it, right? The transparency, the visibility of pay is, is an issue with commissions. It's just a, a, a time old tale of, of being hard. Um, three, don't integrate with current systems. Again, like how many systems are all of you in? Um, I know that I think like for, I know Meredith is on this call and I know how she loves how many different systems we have here at Spiff. And that's, I think that's probably pretty consistent across the, uh, the world. Just a lot of different systems having to use and they don't always talk well with each other, which can make this tough um, and scaling it. Right. Um, this one I think specifically goes a little bit more with spreadsheet, but even with any type of system, software, whatever, it's like making sure that you've designed uh, your comp process is a scale. Is again really what we want to focus on? Um, and again, we're going to get a lot more focused here on the spreadsheets. But Colin, Stan, anything you guys would like to add there? Not at this time. I just, I mean, I guess this runs is an undercurrent to these four points. But the scary thing for me about spreadsheets is what 
the things that you're not catching, right? Like the fact that you might not know that there are errors, not that there are errors, that, that there are some that you can't see or that uh, you're not offering transparency, but you don't even know that's a pain point because nobody's raising their hand to like complain about it. You know, sometimes there are, there are pain points unaddressed because we don't know about them. And for me, that's the biggest nightmare. Yeah. I, I, like, I don't know if you agree. It seems like a lot of this just has become kind of like this, the status quo at places where it's like, there's like, it's just yeah. what you come to expect. It's like, it's a, uh, we don't ask for a solution or a way to fix it because you just kind of expect commissions to be a really frictionful, like full of friction process. I don't think frictionful is a word. Um, like tons of tons of friction in the process. So yeah. Um, awesome. Well, let's 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 dive in here. If my hold on, there we go. Cool. So solutions and better ways. So guys, let's let's dive right in to numbers here and. Um, Colin Stan is like all I, I can sometimes just go on and talk. So you just make sure you tell me to shut up whenever, whenever it's time. So um, <laughs> spreadsheets are prone to human error, right? And good commission process is prone to human error. So these are going to come. We'll, we'll actually, for anyone who wants it, we can get you a copy of an article that we have on our blog that has the sources for these numbers here. But right now, according to our source, right, 88% of spreadsheets have one or more errors in their formulas. Like, Nine out of 10 different spreadsheets that oftentimes hold some of the most important data for an or for an organization have an error. Um, and I, I unfortunately am uh, very guilty of that in my, my past is both as an analyst and as running sales teams. Um, and that like, again, right here, I don't love just reading for beta, but like 65% of sales managers say that the biggest challenge for them is the lack of time and resources to perform their job. Um, so going hand in hand, like, A, we don't even have enough time as it is to solve these problems, but there's so many problems that are going on in our current systems and solutions. Um, and we're going to talk about a few different ways to kind of curb this here in a sec. But Stan, uh, curious, I know you have a kind of a, a couple of good examples here of how you've seen that come into play in your career. Yeah, so I, I think first and foremost, I think we would all agree on this call that you know the the utilization of spreadsheets is really limitless. But um, I think just for the reason why we're all on this call, we need to recognize that human error is inevitable, and particularly to commission management, um, there's likely going to be a mistake, and that is usually only found, unfortunately, uh, after the fact that it's been paid out. So. Uh, oftentimes that's going to be one of the most painful things we as professionals will experience or have to do to recover uh, those monies if, if it was an overpayment, as an example. And that ultimately will lose you know, trust. And so, uh, you know, one, I, I, I got permission from one of our reps, but one company's error ended up being one of Spiff's gains. But uh, one of the references Tanner mentioned earlier, uh, our top performer at Spiff uh, had a a two-year mistake. And what that means is basically an overpayment over a two-year window, which ended up being over $50,000. Just imagine how demotivating that is to, uh, to have to claw that back. She basically was pulled into a room and said, hey, this was the mistake. It was our error uh, and we need to claw that back. Uh, so again, our gain, because she's an amazing sales professional and uh, we're excited to have her on board, but that's not uh, atypical. Uh, and that's only from the rep perspective. So if we think about it from uh, the company perspective, uh, there are also uh, cascading or organizational impacts. And, and an example of that we already covered in an overpayment, there are underpayments. So if we think about not just the financial impact to a business, but just think about the loss of production that happens as a result of, of what we're talking about here. And uh, the last use case is uh, a past company that I worked for, they were on a, a monthly cadence uh, using Excel sheets distributing those to to the segment leader and then to the frontline manager and then the the pdf versions were then at that point sent out for distribution well oftentimes that window is is this two three maybe even shorter type of window where uh, that ends up creating uh, a mass uh, process of getting uh, those calculations figured out if there's a, a lack in trust in, in the numbers and that really is a, a lack of production. So I think what we're going to get into in terms of solutions is 
the way I think about commissions, and anytime I move to a company that you know uh, I'm driving a particular plan and, and trying to execute on that plan, is commissions is is what I consider the sacred cow, and it needs to be one of the best processes we have as a, an organization. Yeah, I totally agree, it's, Dan. It's like commissions. Commissions are meant to be what's driving your organization forward, right? Like that's what we're for anyone who is on type any type of in any type of role that's usually trying to drive revenue or drive performance um, rather than like retain or build, um, you are, you're going to be comped on, on some type of variable comp model. And it's just, it's crazy how many issues there are with it, with how important it can be. And I, not, not that it can be how important it is. Um, uh, on that point, Tanner, actually, yeah. I'm kind of curious. I have a, I want to ask the audience real quick. Um, if you're aware, I'm going to pop up a poll, everybody. So if you're paying attention, uh, please answer. Just launched it. While you give us your answers or how often you or your team find errors in your commissions reports, I'll share a quick story that might actually bleed a little into your next point there. But um, back when I was leading my, my first team, one of my employees, awesome, she was expressing interest in becoming a manager one day herself, and she just wanted to know more about what I do. So she said, like, how do you spend your days? And the first thing that came to my mind was, like, I track commissions, um, which made me feel kind of crappy because, like, I had never had given it thought that I was just spending that much time, like, manually taking numbers from an email and putting them in a spreadsheet and then, like, triple checking it. But uh, it wasn't a very, like, you know, I'm going to sit here and tell this person who's working her butt off that I just moved numbers around all day. Um, so it was kind of a sad little moment. We've got almost 20 votes. Can we get two more votes from people on this poll prone to humor and error? I just want to get some good data for us. It'll be awesome. I'm excited to see. Two more. Two more. All right. I'm going to end the poll. So here are our results. How often do your team find errors in your commission reports? Well, every week is really scary, but most of us saying once a quarter, about 40% of us. That's still That's really it. scary if you think about yeah. it. I mean, what I, there's overpayments well, or underpayments for the org, but these are this is like you know people's income, right? If you're yeah, underpaying I, your reps, it's money that they can't spend on themselves. Yeah, and I think a factor there, Colin, as well, is it could be a result of them uh, being on a quarterly cadence versus a monthly cadence, as an example. So it kind of depends on uh, how their commission structure works. But that that is still uh, a high amount of errors <laughs> that we're seeing. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, that's, cool. that's crazy. Shall we move on, gentlemen? Let's do it. I'll kick over here to the next one. So... Let's, let's talk about some solutions here. Um, and there's so many different things you can do. Uh, first off, for anyone who is working as that Excel or Google Sheets and you're trying to lock something down, Google is an amazing place. Um, and it's got to be the most documented piece of software in the world. Um, probably followed very far behind by Salesforce, which I think is crazy documented as well. Um, but a couple of these things here. Um, that we have used in the past, like I've used in my past life, um, and we still use in other docs. Obviously, we're we're automating ours through our software, but um, the lock feature is like one of the most unutilized tools inside of Excel or inside of a spreadsheet. Like you can lock any cell or any doc so that people can't change it or that you can't accidentally change it yourself. And that is um, as much as like I hate to admit that for myself that I am my biggest like. Uh, enemy inside Excel by accidentally changing something I don't realize is referenced somewhere else. That lock feature can be huge. Um, establishing a system of checks and balances to double check manual work. So, uh, and, and I'm actually going to compare, like put these last two together, like clearly document processes and formulas. So for anyone here on the call who's ever been an analyst or any type of uh, consultant before in the past, um, I did a, an internship when I was in school as a financial analyst. Like it's it's crazy when you when you open up their docs, um, they're usually pretty detailed. You usually open up the first page or two where all of the grid lines are removed, and there's like twenty steps of like this is what you do, this is what you do, this is how this works, these are how these work together. And funny enough, like we don't see that as much in commission spreadsheets, and I think it's because uh, 
like a i don't think it's looked at as as complicated as a um like an analysis which i don't know if that's true or not uh, personally after seeing so many different comp docs um from across the world but i am a huge fan of just create especially if you're using google sheets because you can actually add or you can assign things to people um document this out write it through write write the process out make sure that you you separate out the things that should be changing versus the things that aren't um and these spreadsheets should be treated anything everything just like any type of revenue um spreadsheet any type of budgeting spreadsheet where we often have these types of checks and balances in place and documents um, or the documentation to make it happen so those are huge ways and as we've gone through and talked with customers we've looked or talked to, to the um uh, to the market we've looked at different customers sheets and see which ones have been working for them which ones haven't these are through the three main things we see that make a world of difference as you're actually trying to use spreadsheets to manage this uh, this pretty cumbersome process Stan, Colin, anything you guys like to add there? No, I, I think the third point is going to be a pretty consistent theme throughout uh, all four, which is clear, documented processes. And uh, the the better we are in in communication and in expectations, uh, the happier uh, and more trust will be built within departments. So I think this will be a point that you're going to see as a a, a, a repeating theme throughout. We've actually got a couple of good questions that might fit here for, for either of you, whoever wants to take it. So uh, let's take Laura's. So Lauren Stern, thanks for the question, Lauren. Um, her question was, how do you communicate changing comp plans with reps and how does that go? So I, for me, that the reason this is connected is because we're talking communication and documentation. Uh, I'll maybe start that. Uh, I think it's a great question. And uh, I don't think what, uh, my response will be is is unique, uh, but I do think it's important. Uh, obviously, getting alignment with corporate is really important to understand what the goals are and the objectives and what we're trying to do the given year that, that we're in. And that comp plan should be driving that behavior. But I also, uh, you know, based on, you know, what the outcome of that is, I, I do talk to a few reps early on before we actually execute on it. Not necessarily all the particulars, but more of the structure. If there's a big change, uh, I do more of the conversation. If there are minor changes, there may be very little. But I take some of the, the top performers and a few reps and just try to get some sentiment on, on some of the changes that, that are made. Are they excited about it? Are they less excited about it? Because oftentimes that feedback helps us pivot and, and make a comp plan that really drives excitement and in, in the right behavior. So that's just an idea that, that I thought about with that question. Yeah, it's really interesting. interesting. Stan, just to build off what you're saying, it's like you can't over communicate when it comes to comp. Um, mm -hmm. There are some things that you should probably keep close to the chest as, as like any manager should, right? Around like some of the strategy maybe around it um, or like maybe just some of the, maybe not the strategy, maybe some of the numbers and obviously like what other people's comp is. Um, but like the, the only issues you're going to have with communicating around comp is if you're not communicating about comp, um, you should be talking with it. It should be a continuous discussion during one-on-ones in my opinion. I, I mean, again, probably a little biased here, but like your sales team and anyone who's on a variable comp plan, like their whole life revolves around this. This is why they're working for you. Um, more or less. So like make it a topic that they're comfortable to talk about something that you're, that you're easy to go th to like go through um ways to, that it actually goes and like some different things you can use one thing we see a lot and i'm sure everyone here does especially if you're working in some of the more high more high regulated states like california new york etc is sending things out through like a docusign or a hello sign um and actually having to have it like in kind of like your legal jargon um it's a pain but big fan of that it just it makes it so simple and so cut and dry um I mean, whatever they're using to communicate, we, we talk about it in Slack pretty openly, obviously, like when it's the right time. Um, we also have, I mean, Stan's really good at this, kind of talking around just comp high level and uh, sales meetings or sales standups throughout the month and throughout the quarter. But I, I think obviously there's so many like edge cases that you can get into, especially if people have concerns around comp or concerns around changes. Also, this is way tougher when you um, are making like, kind of a negative change to comp, which unfortunately has to happen sometimes, especially if you're growing like crazy or changing a lot. Um, but if you set up like a really open, transparent culture around 
compensation and variable comp in, in particular, that should flow better and become more natural. Mm. So this actually brings us perfectly into Mitch's question. Mitch Bell, thanks for the question. Uh, Mitch says, here's a question to win the hoodie. How <laughs> long does it take for an organization to instill trust in the system from reps and eliminate like their shadow accounting? Like if they're keeping their own spreadsheet, right? How long does it take for that to go away when you switch from an Excel-based system to something like a SPIF? I like, yeah. I like the term uh, shadow accounting. I, that was one that, uh, that you know, when we were talking about a, 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 the next point, that when it comes to transparency and visibility, which is probably a good time to segue into that, uh, as a result of, you know, reps are looking for that real-time accessibility to uh, the calculations and the overall commissions. And I could tell you just from just uh, an example of, of a, a company that I worked for, there were two screens. On one screen, there was the CRM. So let's just assume we're on a monthly cadence and we're into the first week and there's that mad dash. You can just tell it's they're putting the racing hats on and and on one side, there is the CRM. And then on the other screen, they're, they've got their Excel document up and, and just making sure that they're ready for that mad two, three-day window to make sure that they're getting paid uh, you know, what they need to. And I was talking to our CRO the other night, uh, or yesterday, actually. And it's interesting because when you think about transparency and visibility into commissions, when there's only that little bit, bit, of, bit of time, like what we've talked about, commissions is a big deal. Every dollar, every cent matters. And there was a scenario where uh, there was a discrepancy and it was only an $8 discrepancy. Well, as, as individual contributors, we're looking at that $8, not like satisfy the problem and, and pay me the eight bucks. We're thinking, mm -hmm. well, where else is it wrong? And yep. it's, it's a bigger challenge. And so it's, it's something that uh, is really important for individual contributors and sales leaders, because as we talked about, as sales leaders, we want our reps to be uh, working on revenue producing activities. And uh, when that doubt creeps in, you know, I, I could tell you just from experience, I spent two days out of the month working as a segment leader to deal with disputes that were legitimate, by the way. Mm -hmm. and, and if I was working two days out of the month uh, on commissions. Imagine what the impact of the business would be with three or four frontline managers and then individual contributors that are experiencing something similar. So it's, you know, re uh, revenue producing activities and providing real-time access is, is something that's, that is important and is probably really important more so for, for the individual contrib contributors. I'd say, Colin, I mean, just to add like really quick there from, from what we've seen as far as like the data goes, and this doesn't have to necessarily, like, I'm going to talk from context of, a context of us rolling this out to our customers, but I don't think that it's unique to just software. It could also just be with a very, like, good process. Um, I think generally it takes about three months for people to feel comfortable. It generally takes about a quarter or a full cycle for people to feel, like, comfortable without having to do their shadow accounting. So we generally see a pretty big drop off of, of, of reps feeling like they have to keep their own spreadsheet compared to the company's spreadsheet or system. Uh, about after three 90 ish days or so after after it rolls through but it really depends on like how destroyed the trust was in the past as well yeah yeah i can imagine uh, 90 days sounds kind of fast for me i mean basically what you're seeing there is the change in the behavior of stop using shadow stop doing shadow accounting but the difference in the behavior for me signals a mind shift and that those people feel a sense of psychological safety in their jobs and when you feel secure in your job and that your income is being taken care of that you don't have to worry about it every day uh, the difference in performance and the ability to focus must be massive yeah, yeah and I, I think like i think this actually dives like really well into this next thing because i think it's what this is completely built off of right that trust that you're building is the transparency um and in real-time transparency right so that's a huge challenge um which is commissions in general is like not just like hey can i see what i've earned it's like can i see what i've earned throughout the month so that i'm not in this mad dash in the last three days to try to like correct things so yeah. um obviously i mean this i think this goes without saying for a lot of stuff like big disconnects relationship management quota attainment like quota attainment especially is one of the things that we saw the most issues with as we kind of did our research here on like the transparency and visibility like people didn't even know where they were at towards their accelerators 
And usually if they thought they did, they were wrong or management was wrong. Like someone was, someone was wrong. Um, so, I mean, Stan, Colin, anything you'd like to add there on that one? I'm also trying, I'm noticing that we uh, were probably a little bit behind schedule on, on these. So I want to make sure that we get through all the, the content. Um, any, any like anecdotes or stories you want to share, share on this slide here? Not necessarily here, but on, on the solutions, uh, as I mentioned in the first one, the common theme is a documented process. So in this case, a schedule um, and then regular distribution. And Tanner will talk a little bit more about that. But generally, the way I look at it, similar, we're all familiar with service level agreements in, in a very similar way. I think there should be a similar structure with the process of commission management, uh, regardless of the setup, so that there's clear expectations and reps know what they're, they're going to get on a monthly, quarterly, how, or, or however often uh, your cadence is. But I, I do think uh, that relationship is really important with the reps and those expectations are, are exactly what Colin was talking about. This is their bread and butter. They want to know at any given time um you know what what's possible love it yeah and i mean just again again totally just building off that the document um and well, let's let's look at this middle one for a second like regularly distribute commission reports this has to be probably the hardest thing to do in a, in a spreadsheet like environment but it's actually not impossible um so i, I ran a sales team been about 20 people on it for about a year um and this was a huge issue for us we had a, we had a homegrown system um, it was a huge pain, but I had just like every company does. I had a whole bunch of Excel wizards scattered throughout the building, um, and so I went to one of them one day, and we actually built just a quick macro inside Excel. That what it would do is it would pull the numbers from our internal systems, and obviously the systems everything has to match up. But I was actually able to get this macro. So all I had to do is click a button, um, and it would send it out. So I'd actually send mine out daily to my team. Um, so they could see where they were at. It was also a very transactional business, so that might not be necessary all the time. But it, it is possible. Um, and then I, I know every organization has Excel wizards if you're not one yourself. Um, and so there's there's things we could do there. Also, we see a lot of like comp like calculators that people are using, especially with Google Sheets, because Google Sheets makes it a little bit easier to be transparent kind of real time if someone's using that. So if your org uses Google Sheets, that's a great way to do it. Um, and this established formal lines of communication is like goes hand in hand as like, again, communication is huge here. Reps should know exactly who they need to talk to managers the same, and that should be really well outlined. That will, that will solve a lot of issues. If reps feel helpless, like they don't know where to go. It just, I mean, it multiplies your issues here. And so I would highly suggest that that's one of the things that's in your onboarding documents is like, hey, if you have a question about compensation, you go to your manager and from there, they will go to them. If you feel like you're not getting what you need, still go to your manager. I mean, obviously it's, it's kind of up to you. Um, we tell all of our team to go over Stan's head because it's just kind of what we do, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, um, <laughs> so um, I'm just kidding. But anyways, that's... These are kind of the solution, again, main solutions from experience and from the research we've done of kind of solving that visibility problem. Perfect. So let's let's go ahead and move on to this next one here. Um, integrate with current systems. So this is huge for, for one reason, like, or not one reason, for one of the main reasons, right, is the more times you have to put something in, the more likely you're going to have problems with it and the more tired your team gets with putting that in. Meaning like if your team has to put the same number into three different systems, A, that's three different opportunities to put it in incorrectly. And all of us have made that mistake before. Um, also, that means that you've got to pull that reporting from three different spots. And it's just it's just a huge issue, right? So 51% of sales organizations are using data to analyze and improve performance. Um, and this is, I mean, that's, that's a lot. And this is, I mean, kind of anyone who has a sales team for what we've been, what we've seen. Um, and again, we'll share our sources here with you, but getting your data so that it can work for you. And especially when it comes to commissions and making sure that, it, that the things are talking is really big. It's really, really important. Uh, I'm Stan actually kind of curious to, uh, yeah. I'm going to launch a poll because I'm, we have a question about bifurcated systems. Um, and another couple of questions about like complexity of measurement. So I'm going to launch a poll. Let's see how many systems people use. And I'll just give you a few seconds to answer that.
Whoa, this is already surprising. Wow, I can't wait to show you all the results of this. uh, I'm watching really (laughs) intently. I was expecting something different. All right, I'm going to wrap this poll up in five seconds. Okay, so if you want to vote, toss a vote in there. How many systems do you use to calculate or communicate commissions? Okay, let's share the results. So I honestly thought that more people would use more systems, but 70% of people here are saying they really only use one to two. Um, like looking back on my days, I had, I had three. I had three different ones. I used spreadsheets. I had some Salesforce reports that I would send out. And then there was another bit of software that nobody's ever heard of that I used to calculate some things. So yeah, yeah, I'm curious. I wonder if it's mostly the Excel sheets and CRMs that people are, are looking at with that. Yeah, I think there comes uh, uh, complexity with that. I mean, it kind of depends on um, the type of plan that they're on. So if it's a, a bookings type of plan, it's usually just one system that they're pulling the data from. If it's uh, bookings and invoice kind of scenario, sometimes they're pulling that from an ERP. So I think it just kind of depends on the complexity and where the data is being pulled from. But Uh, It's interesting to see that, uh, you know, the good percentage are one to two. Do you mind if we take a question on complexity right now, guys? Because there is a really great question here from Blake. Thanks, Blake. Um, So I'm going to try to distill it down. Blake gave some great context. Basically, he's saying, you know, I think people lean on spreadsheets when they're trying to be small and scrappy and account for like flexibility or variance or nuance in comp plans. And then when you feel the sense of maturity of moving towards something that's a little bit more in control than a spreadsheet, it might be easier to move over like SDR or BDR comp plans uh, and maybe a little bit harder to move over like AE or enterprise sales comp plans where sometimes there's like one-offs or special cases. Um, I think the question is like, at what point do you shift away from individualized comp plans to a more structured approach? Or is it ever wise to have two systems? One that's like a very structured system driven approach for BDRs uh, and like a more manual process for enterprise AEs. What are your thoughts, sorry. Dan? Or Tanner, sorry. Uh, so, I mean, just to make sure I'm understanding the question, right, are we talking about like, hey, when do we move to like just a much more standardized like quota, annual quota, attainment accelerator type of model? Yeah, exactly. Like, it, how do you know when when is the right time to do that if AEs are being comped a little bit differently depending on like the size or territory right now? Yeah, I, I, so I'll hop in there. Um, you know, the, the crappy answer is it kind of depends, right? The, the, a couple things that you can look for when you're trying to make some of these decisions is like, a how how uh, predictable are your numbers? Um, keeping things a little bit more agile when you're smaller or growing really quickly does give you the upper hand to make changes, right? Now, like making changes costs, so don't. Like you don't want to make too many changes and too often, even if you're a small, simple org. But this does allow you to kind of adjust initiatives um, to be able to to uh, kind of focus on different products or different segments that you're trying to dive into. Where uh, if you are actually, but the minute that you feel like you're pretty confident in what your quotas could be, right? The pretty confident on what your forecasts look like, what should be achieved, what success looks like. I'd highly suggest moving over to kind of your more standardized model there. There's a reason why so many people go with the annual quota and then the annual accelerator, right? Um, we, we call it marginal accelerator because it's oftentimes like zero to 100 is X and then 100 plus is a whole different percentage. It's because it's a, it's, it makes one, one size fit all pretty well. Um, it still has its flexibility, but overall it's just a, a tried and true way to make it happen. Um, so that's, that's what I would say is like, just cause if you trust your numbers, try to simplify it as much as possible. Um, if it's not quite predictable yet, or you just don't feel confident in your cycle, then you probably want to leave yourself some room, which might mean some overhead and managing a couple of different types of systems or, um, not, not systems, but a couple of different types of processes. That's great insight. 
Hopefully that answered your question, Blake. Let us know if it didn't. Dan, do you have any thoughts there? No, I think it was well said. I don't think I have anything further. Great. All right, so awesome. we were talking about integration. Uh, yeah, so let's let's, let's dive into kind of some of the solutions here, right? So, like again, some of these I probably even go without saying. Like the reports that you have inside your systems is huge. Like, kind of figure out what you need, um, and either a try to automate that. Things like Zapier or really any type of middleware solution that you have or iPaaS system can do a lot of this for you if you spend some time on it, or probably more than you think, to actually automate this, these processes into your spreadsheets. Um, but make a consistent process and save those reports, make sure everyone's there and don't make changes unless you have like a, a group or whoever is actually in charge who thinks about those changes. If you, if you just make changes all the time, oftentimes you're going to run into issues. Um, you can schedule a document, right? So you're just going to hit that over. Like, again, when you're using a manual system like Excel or, or Google Sheets, you've got to have a schedule and you need to document what that workflow looks like. So going through um, how often are you going to be updating this? How often is Zapier going to be pulling this in for you? Um, Zapier is Zapier, I guess. I, don't, I might be saying it wrong. Um, but anyways, like those, those are huge. I mean, Stan, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think uh, you know when I when I was thinking through this this third uh, challenge, you know, I was thinking about our finance friends, and you know, as a sales leader and having been an individual contributor and kind of gone through the progression, uh, I often forget the when it comes to systems and, and building uh, the, the data sets and marrying the data, running the formulas. I mean, our our finance friends do a lot of work to get to that end state. And uh, I do think that it's really important for sales leaders specifically that engage to make sure that this process build out is aligned and that those relationships are solid. Because, again, uh, it all comes down to having really good processes to make sure that trust is built, not just with sales, but throughout the organization when it comes to commission management. But, you know, let's just face it, spreadsheet, for, uh, spreadsheet formulas are notoriously difficult to troubleshoot. And with good alignment and rapport with the various departments, I think it just allows that collaboration uh, to happen at a more effective pace. But I know we had a controller or two and some financial people. So just a quick shout out. Appreciate all you do. But uh, I think it's really important to have solid partnerships. And then when I think about the last point, uh, clearly document uh, any workflows and standardization, you know, my immediate thought went to COVID. When COVID hit, I, I held uh, for probably two, three quarters, uh, a standing session with other sales leaders. And one of the biggest challenges that existed for them was everyone was pivoting for the most part, a majority of them. Others were flourishing because uh, the COVID actually caused them to accelerate a lot of things. But for others, it didn't. And think about how many of us uh, saw changes last year. And, you know, with Excel, it, it sometimes is hard when you're making a pivot to a comp plan as a result of, you know, a, a pandemic like like uh, we had last year and are still working through. So I would just say just clear documented workflows and really standardization across the board. It's going to help transition when those things happen. Another one that could potentially happen is a new product build out. Uh, that might be an added element that you would add to a comp plan and having really consistent workflows and having some standardized processes will, will really help facilitate uh, a streamlined motion. Yeah, so, that's, that's Dan. Uh, so let's let's move on here. I mean, call anything else you want to add? Sorry, before we move on to this the last point. No, let's move on. I've got a couple of good questions. I'm going to save them to the end, and folks will try to make a couple minutes for more questions at the end. So if you have them, you still have a chance to drop them in the Q&A or the chat. All right. So um, last thing to finish off of, right? And again, we're talking about spreadsheets specifically. Let's just talk about any process. Processes, especially commissions, like and historically are not designed to scale well, right? Um, like tons of issues with quota setting, understanding how to do it. And teams are just growing. Um, in general, I think teams are always getting bigger. And as they are, you continually kind of stretch out those, those current processes. In spreadsheets in particular, we've talked a lot about the, like the 
growth pains of scaling kind of throughout the other points, right? So we talked about like visibility into it. Like you can't just share that sheet with everyone anymore. Once you have a hundred people, like it's, it has to be much more confidential. Um, just making sure that there's visibility into the processes gets harder as you have more and more levels, the communication flow gets tougher. Um, there's just so many different things that can really just kind of layer on top of each other to make this more difficult as we scale. But just like everything I'm talking about, right? There's a few things that you can do here to better prep yourself and your and your and your uh, spreadsheets, your your uh, processes, so that you can actually scale, and so that this is as little of a growing pain for you as possible. So, Stan, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, do you want to, I'll kick this to you to kind of run through these ones. Yeah, and I think when it that first one, know when it's time to move beyond spreadsheets. You know, to me, it's uh, as 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 we work with uh, our organizations and think about what what are the symptoms that manifest when it comes to uh, when it's time to move beyond spreadsheets. There are a few things that, for me, that come to mind. It's we've talked about most of them actually, which in this case would be reps asking for real time access. Uh, Tana had mentioned uh, sales leaders and, and reps alike looking for. Uh, quota attainment or just general performance, uh, reps looking for visibility into uh, potential commissions. So maybe not just you know what would it look like in today's uh, current state, what's closed, but you know what could be my future. Uh, what does that look like? And having them do more. Um, Excel formulas are getting harder to manage to avoid that human error that we talked about. And then um, you know, you're spending as as finance professionals more time is being spent generating and sending spreadsheets. And frankly, sending bulk uh, statements cannot scale, and so those are some of the the symptoms that that we often hear working with uh, customers that uh, often come up. Another uh, factor that goes into it as our business scales when you get into uh, you know additional segmentation. We talked a little bit about that just a second ago. Uh, when do you move from kind of individual to kind of more of a cohort type plan, uh, specialization, overlays, you know, promotions, uh, businesses that are scaling, it's a pretty fast paced scenario. And it's hard to do that oftentimes and scale with new comp plans that uh, are appropriated. Uh, but it, it uh, needs to meet the pace of uh, scale. And uh, that's, those are definitely signs of, of when moving beyond spreadsheets. Uh, and I would say just one other point uh, when it comes to the other two, uh, maybe the last one in particular, uh, just regular review of your, your, your management process. I think it's always healthy in any process to do a quarterly review. Is it meeting the needs of, of, my, of my end users and of my leaders and those that I work with? I think it's a great common practice to make sure that there's uh, uh, recognition on any inconsistencies or errors that we found so we can apply those lessons learned and uh, make those adjustments so that next quarter is even smoother. But I, I really like these solutions for scale because I think a lot of the businesses that are on this call are scaling at a pretty fast rate. It's pretty amazing to see some of the growth. And I, I would also say just one as a last point, uh, think about it this way. Most, I would say north of eight to maybe 10% of, of revenue is spent on commissions. So, I mean, that's from an audit perspective and making sure that, you know, from a, the finance side of things, we're we're in um, compliance is, is something that's really important. So having a regular check-in and making sure that everyone's trained up and involved in the process to keep make sure everything's consistent, including the data, is is a really solid best practice. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Dan. Yeah, totally, totally good call. Anything you want to add? I, I have like one closing remark after this that I want to drop in there before we get, we hop into QA. But is there anything else that you want to dive into on this point? Yeah, not for me. We we do have some good questions, so I'm curious to hear your closing remark, and maybe we get some people some help for situations they're facing. Yeah, so I'll I'll be really fast, guy. I mean, we've talked about a lot, um, and I, I think the the thing that like to keep in mind, right, when you're using spreadsheets, um, and I'm stealing this a little bit from from some people I work closely with, but I think it's pretty like it's not looked at as much as it should be, but Excel and and kind of in turn Google Sheets. It's probably the most successful business software in the history of business, right? Think about how much you use Excel for, how flexible it is. Think about like how many people's careers are built off of modeling and building inside Excel. Um, it's 
crazy powerful. You're literally coding. It's, it's really just a watered down version of SQL, right? When you're building inside Excel, but there's cost to that flexibility. There's cost to that unless you know how to do it and you do it right. So as you're building, um, work with user resources, build, like you do what you can um, to make this as scalable as possible. Um, and at some point, there may be a time when you feel like, just like with a lot of different processes, like CRMs or forecasting, that commissions might be something that you look for to move into a more of a, a focus system that's not quite as quite as flexible. I mean, maybe just as flexible, but isn't used for so many different things. Um, but keep that in mind as you're building. You're using a powerful tool. There's probably a way to do what you're thinking. Um, but just document, communicate, and like think about the future as you're building these things out. So there's there's ways to do it. There's ways to make it successful. And, and hopefully, like our main goal here was for you to come with a few takeaways of ways that you can take your current process today and take it to the next level just to, to increase that job satisfaction from your team and make, make comp plans more visible and powerful for your whole organization. So um, anyway, I think, Colin, I think we're, sorry, I uh, just wanted to kind of finish off with that. But and, like, I think we're ready and excited for some QA if it's if it's time. Great. Yeah. And um, just, to, just to say, we're already getting some uh, shout outs and thanks from uh, the attendees. John Bird, for one. Shout out, John Bird. Um, so let's start, let's start with Matias's question. Matias, you've been so patient. Thanks. Um, so Matias is saying that one of their services is based on an annual program. And the AE KPI is to renew those programs. So they the measure, the comps are measured quarterly. Um, but the revenue impact is for the whole year. So right now they're cascading that revenue impact in the comp through four quarters and saying that they've only found spreadsheets could give freedom for that kind of seasonality or that kind of like staggered approach to paying out. Do you have any recommendations there? Yeah. So let me just make sure I just I'm going to reread the question just to make sure I understand the poll. So um, on recommendations, I mean, a lot of this newer software can also handle that for you. I don't want to talk too much about how we would handle that specifically, but if you want to talk more about that, we'd obviously be happy to answer. Um, but anything like a lot of this is always going to depend on the data that you have inside your CRM or kind of what you're managing that as far as like how you can actually process that and make it visible. So spreadsheets or not, um, I think like the more recommendations here would be to look at how you're tracking that data. Um, see if there's different ways to make that more visible. There's just so much like the one thing about like the, the only simple thing to understand about compensation is it's complex, right? Like there's just always things in between in the lines in between um, processes unique to each product or service. So I wish I had a better answer. And Matthias, if you want to connect on LinkedIn or email me or whatever, um, I'd be happy to talk more more uh, or try to help as much as I can. Here's another kind of uh, case specific one that I'd be curious to hear either of your thoughts on. So Grace Ayers, thanks for the question, Grace. Um, so they spend a lot of time and energy splitting commissions manually between a territor territory sales role and an outside sales role. Um, says it's in Excel and it's a big time consumer. Any suggestions in that case? So Grace, I don't know if you're still on here. If you are, are you guys currently using a CRM? I'll give Grace just like like a few minutes to message back. If not, um, I'll just assume that she is. Okay. So the, the biggest thing here. Oh, not for this. Okay. She. So yeah. First, thank you so much, Grace. So. Um, my. I, I mean, again, I don't understand the full kind of like breadth of the situation here. The best thing that we've seen for splits time and time again is to make a part of the process inside the CRM if possible. Um, using things like, I mean, we're, we're, I'm talking Salesforce specifically here because that's what we use and what we're most familiar with, but HubSpot, Zoho, Dynamics all have the same type of functionality, but using things like Opportunity Teams, um, you can do a custom object for a split inside of there. Somehow, and like whether, and even if you're just doing it on a spreadsheet, uh, which isn't ideal for splits in particular because it's pretty manual, but finding some way to make it, uh, make the data match, like join the data together can save you tons and tons of time. If you are using Salesforce, I would really suggest, or, or HubSpot too, because um, those are the ones I'm most familiar with. 
uh, I would really suggest using an opportunity splits or deal splits inside of there, which is just a native object you can just turn on, um, which will default everything that you have right now to 100%. It's pretty easy to do. Um, but it just makes a, just so much difference for you as you're actually going through that process. So, um, but yeah, let me know if, uh, Grace, if you want to talk more about that, um, to like, and like, especially like, so you use dynamics, um, happy to talk more if you want to talk about that specifically. We also have an amazing sales ops person in our org who I'm sure would be happy to chat uh, if you wanted to talk to him. Tanner, it's Tanner. I took the liberty of, <laughs> hope you don't mind dropping your uh, LinkedIn profiles in the chat here. So folks, if you want to connect with Tanner or Stan, you can ask them questions afterwards. Feel free. I am double checking here, but it looks like that's all the questions we've got, which is probably good because I know y'all probably have some uh, meetings to run to right at the top of the hour. So just want to say at the end here, sales hacker folks, community members, you're, you always blow me away with the uh, level of engagement and thought and insight and participation you bring to these webinars that we do every Tuesday and Thursday. So I want to let you know that we all appreciate that. Uh, hopefully this was valuable and useful for you and Stan and Tanner. Thank you both so much for coming. Uh, if you want to connect with Stan and Tanner, use LinkedIn. Their links are in the chat. Anything else you want to end with guys? Yeah. I, uh, Tanner was able to give his last thought. Let me give you mine. And my last thought is simply this. I, I think a good comp plan with a good comp process can be the difference in a competitive landscape. And uh, that really is a motivating factor for reps. And if it's done right, that could be a game changer for any organization, in, regardless of what industry you're in. So that's my last thought. Absolutely. You're here. Awesome. Yeah, nothing for me. That's, that's it, Colin. Uh, this, thanks. this was awesome chatting today, Colin. Thanks for, for having us on. And uh, please, if anyone has any questions, like, we'd just love to connect. and. I uh, would love any feedback and excited to to continue to uh, stay connected to everyone here on the, on the webinar. Thanks, cool. everybody. All right, thanks again, everybody. Hope everybody has a great, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. We'll see you next time.